Hey Battle Bays, welcome back to another vlog. I'm at home, obviously. And I just, <laughs> I just woke up from a nap. Am I the only one? I can't be the only one. I swear me and my husband go through the same thing, but do y'all feel refreshed after a nap? Y'all hold on real quick. Dang it, still. I literally just had a bag in my hand, told myself to bring it up here and I didn't. Anyway, do y'all feel refreshed after a nap? Because when I take a nap, like while I'm taking the nap in the process of the nap, I feel, I was watching Family Guy, y'all can probably hear. Just following me all throughout the house, but yeah, while I'm actually taking the nap, it feels nice. It feels good and everything. But then once it's time for me to get up, y'all, I feel so... Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. It's a lot going on right now. But I feel so exhausted. I feel even more drained than when I went to sleep. Why wow, those stairs were just so hard? Anyway, um, hold on. Let me get my life together for a quick second. Uh, yeah, I swear every single time I actually wake up to, um, from a nap, I feel so exhausted. I feel like super droggy, like my body's super tired. I'm just like discombobulated and lightheaded. I just... I be hyperventilating. I feel like my heart be racing. And that lasts for a good 15, 20 minutes. And so I literally just have to sit there with it. I'll probably grab some water and like just drink some water. It's just, oof. But even if I don't have water like right there waiting, I, I'm i just not going to have water immediately because uh, it's bad. It's all bad. And I don't know why that is. So do anybody else go through these issues? Do anybody else go through the ordeal with naps? Anyway, um, I welcomed y'all to the vlog, right? I did. So what I'm doing right now, well, let's back up because earlier today, right, I had my first VA appointment. Um, cause I told y'all, I told y'all I'm on my way out of the military. I am in the med board process and I had my first exam today. For the most part, I felt like it went okay. I felt like it went okay, but I still feel a little crappy about it. I don't, I don't think I feel crappy about it because there was one condition. So my GERD, there was certain... Um, symptoms that I have that I completely forgot to mention. Everything's in my medical records. I still kind of felt crappy that I didn't mention these things. So I hope that's not like a deal breaker or that's not going to like really do anything horrible to the percentage I deserve versus the percentage that I'm going to get. So I didn't feel good about that. I just... I, I left not feeling good. I wish I would have prepared a little bit more for that. Anyway, so what I'm doing right now is I'm sitting over here next to my beautiful, beautiful fragrances. If I can draw your attention to this first shelf here, you can't tell because, um, well, one, I haven't introduced you guys to my fragrance collection just yet. I don't know. I'm just not, I don't know. Which is weird because I'm really, really into my fragrances and I absolutely love them. Like this is, I feel like this is a hobby of mine. It's probably not the most budget friendly hobby, but it's a hobby of mine. But yes, there are less perfumes on this shelf. Obviously you guys wouldn't know, but what I'm doing right now is I'm decluttering my fragrances so I can make room for my new babies that I gotta put in my collection. Um, within, um, I'm, I, I haven't bought a new fragrance in I, like over a month, I wanna say probably. Um, but I do have another list that I have created of things that I wanna go and try out, things that I want to sample, see what else I wanna put into my collection. And so what I did is I took a bunch of them out and I'm just going tier by tier and decluttering. So right now I'm here. 
I'm about to start with here. Starting with this um, Coco Chanel perfume. That is so pretty. Look at that bottle. It's so pretty. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so starting with that. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting to know my fragrances. I know that sounds so weird to some people, but I'm just getting to know my fragrances, which means I'm taking them one by one, reintroducing myself to the different notes and stuff that is in my perfume. I'm listening to people talk about that particular um, the particular fragrance that I am um, sampling. Y'all, when I say I'm spraying it all over my arm um, in, in certain places, and then if I have way too many on, I'll just go and wash my arms real quick and then come back and finish. But when I say to some people, this may sound so boring and so horrible, I am having the most fun. I am having so much fun doing this. I haven't done this in so, 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 so long and I'm having so much fun doing it. There's some though that I am running across that is no longer fitting the chemistry. Well, there's one, okay, because every other one I put over here because I'm going to be sending these off to my family. There's some samples and stuff too, but I'm going to be sending these off to my family and, um, there's one in particular, and it's this Burberry Her. Now, the original Burberry, love. And there's actually two more of the Burberry Hers I want to get. But this one in particular, just real quick, I wanted to love this so much. And don't get me wrong, when I smell it, oh, shit. Uh, when I smell it out of the bottle, it smells so good. It smells so creamy. It's so smooth. It, it has, like... I keep dropping the lid. It has all kind of strawberries and berries and just, it's just way, way mm, like creamier than the original Burberry Her. But y'all, why it seems like it just disappears on my skin now. This used to last and it used to project. And I just feel like it, dry, it dries down to more of a, a skin scent because I sprayed it here the other day. And I want to say, because I'm spraying it and I'm letting it sit as I'm listening to the video and other people's opinions and stuff on the fragrance. And it just wasn't there. It was just gone. And I'm like, is this is this no longer conducive to my collection? Because I actually use my, my um, fragrances. That's the thing. I actually use my fragrances and I'm like, do I no longer need this? That's crazy. So yeah, that's hard. It's still up there. I still got her sitting up there. She's just so pretty. She's just so pretty because I'm just not ready. I'm not ready to let her go just yet. But y'all, as I was going through these perfumes, I realized I think my favorite one, I can't even, I think it was this one. I think it was this one right here. And it's so crazy because I couldn't find much on this one. This was really expensive too. But I couldn't find any like real review. Like a lot of reviews. Like updated reviews on this. But this is so nice. This is so good. So yeah. I could. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah. That's what I am doing right now. And I'm about to have a grand old time. Because y'all I love this. I'm having so much fun <laughs> so much fun so yeah i'm just sitting here on the floor i got my phone i'm about to go ahead and type in this perfume right here so i can go ahead and listen to it i'm about to pull up the notes study over the notes because that's another thing that i'm doing um dang i wish i had like something to set this on top of jeez oh y'all i just realized i got boxes i've been looking for a box so i can send this stuff off and i completely forgot trace sent me some stuff in the mail last night y'all let me show y'all this he sent me this y'all how pretty is this it is so oh my goodness look at that thing it is gorgeous it's so pretty oh my gosh and then like the afro is textured it's beautiful this is beautiful so he got me that as well as, let me set this to the side, as well as this one. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my goodness, 
guys i cannot wait to put this up i don't even know where i'm putting it but i can't wait y'all i want an office so bad i cannot wait until we buy our first house together um he got sent this for darion's room because obviously darion's a big boy we want him to mainly pick out his own thing so we're just going to put basic things in his room but like little things like this to kind of sit around um we kind of know he's going to like these so yeah he got that and then he picked up this um this lamp for mia's room because as y'all know Mia, she got the the butterflies in her room so this is going to be so perfect on the little nightstand i'm about to buy her yeah she's so cute so yeah but i have all those fragrances over there y'all i'm getting rid of a bunch of my starbucks cups as well because i literally i don't know what era of my life i was in that i had collected so many starbucks cups but i do not use them so i'm about to go ahead and declutter that as well so yeah i got these boxes over here and i just realized i can go ahead and send all that stuff off because I got the boxes to do that so yeah i literally just got to that realization and i'm so excited about it because i really got to get this stuff sent off um but yeah let me start going through my scents okay bye fragrance world hi everybody jacob here welcome back to my channel today is perfume review day and today is a special perfume Coco Chanel or Coco by Chanel or Chanel Coco in its eau de toilette form and eau de parfum form. Both of these form. babies are going to get a beautiful review today. Oh, so good. For Coco. In this video, I'm going to be doing a review on a new release from Marc Jacobs. <laughs> Hello, beautiful besties. Welcome back to my channel. We're also talking about Alien Goddess Intense and Alien Goddess. I want to I want to go into this perfume. Every time I come across a perfume that smelling, but light, like if you guys know the note of hyacinth. I one that I'm talking about is Marc Jacobs Perfect Intense. I'm going to smell clean all day. The fragrance notes are grapefruit, peony jasmine and sandalwood a whole bottle until this one runs out this is a soul de janeiro this is a lady million paco paco Rabba. the male version is the one million and this one is the lady million Lauder called beautiful bell so beautiful bell was launched in 2018 the original this is the eau de parfum this is 100 ml so let's hope i like it hello all up and down my timeline i have been seeing y'all talk about these swiss arabian perfume oils y'all so i just finished going through these perfumes and I smell like everything right now. When I say I have perfume all up and down my arms, I smell like everything right now. But I went through all of these and nothing left the second tier. Nothing left. I loved every single thing all over again. Oh my goodness. But I'm trying to figure out something because, what did, which one is it? This one. Um, so I have this smaller one because I would carry this around, but I also have a big one over there. Anyway, so I like this so much, but that those base notes in there, I feel like it's the sandalwood in this and I like it so much, but it's so similar to this Yara because this is one of the ones that I got rid of off the top shelf, but this Yara, um, when you spray it out of the bottle, I really like this, but when it dries down, I'm pretty because it's saying that one of the base notes in this is sandalwood as well. And since it smells so similar, I think that's what it is. But for whatever reason, because this is whole, I'm giving this to my sister. I'm giving this one and then this oil here to my sister. But I don't know. It's so crazy because there are certain notes that I really, really like. Right. And sandalwood is one of those notes. But I'm noticing with certain things in certain fragrances fragrances i do not like sandalwood i don't know what it is maybe it's the amber and stuff that's in this one as well but i don't like it in this but in that mark jacobs perfect intense i absolutely love it that's actually probably what i'm smelling i'm right now all i'm smelling is this and this and i'm i'm in love right now i'm done with the top shelf i'm done with the second shelf and tomorrow i'm gonna work on 
this shelf and then Friday I just have a few of like my greens and you see how I tried to like separate them like by color like all my pinks and like white lights are up here but I still need to get the the bigger tier because this is just a three tier one and I found out that they have a four tier one that still has that little lip part there so yeah I need to get um I need to get the bigger one so yeah but now I'm about to get in a shower and <laughs> wipe all of this um y'all I smell like so many things I smell beautiful don't get me wrong I'm jeez it's a mess in here I smell beautiful don't get me wrong but I'm getting wasp of like I'm smelling everything right now I'm about to wipe it off and then um I want something to eat but I don't know what I want to eat I might just get some sausages and eggs because that's honestly what I've been wanting to eat like for Ever. Like, that's all I want. Breakfast food. That's all I've been in a mood for. So, yeah, let me go ahead and get in a shower and I'm going to see y'all um, later. <clears throat> Over here texting Trey. Anyway, so I got out the shower way earlier, y'all. It is so late right now. It is 23.09 and I really should be laying down to go to sleep. But seeing how I took that nap earlier, I'm not tired at all. And I actually laid down and tried to force myself to go to sleep and it didn't work. Mm, mm, mm. I am in love with my fragrance collection. I am, I love it so much. And as far as like getting into more of my fragrances and like the actual notes and things like that, I am so excited for that. I just don't know how. Like I'm thinking I might go because I used to have a bunch of what are they called? Um, what the hell are they called? Essential oils. So I used to go and sniff around the essential oils and stuff all the time. I cannot wait to start wearing these damn fragrances. Like I'm looking at them right now, and um. Gosh, they just bring back so many memories. I can't wait until I actually start getting up, getting dressed, going to do stuff, having fun, so I can grab for my perfumes. I think the first one that I'm going to have to get when I finally get back to a place where I'm buying my fragrances again is going to be the Angel Share by Killian. Because when I say... That thing was so good. It was so good. Oh, and you know what? Hermes Tilly, they have some of those at the PX right now. I just, I didn't even get a chance to like sample them. I didn't get a chance to like play in them or anything. I was just walking by because I was in a rush and I just so happened to see them. So I think I'm going to have to go window shopping tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going I'm to see. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be the Angel Share by Killian. And then I also need to get a refill of my Seven Virtues Vanilla Woods because y'all already know that's my signature scent. That is my absolute 100% favorite perfume in the entire world and I'm almost out. So I need to get a re-up on that. And yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I can't wait for tomorrow for when I get off work so I can go through that second shelf of my scents to see what I'm keeping, what I'm giving, what I'm throwing out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. So so far, I'm I've gotten rid of twelve, and I'll probably go over those later. But twelve are no longer in my collection right now. But I got my apples and my almond butter, and I put honey. I mix honey into my almond butter. And I just dip that in there. So I'm about to go ahead and snack on that. Um, but real quick before I turn this off for tonight, y'all, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about my med board process so far. Um, dealing with the VA and stuff like that because it hasn't been too bad so far. It hasn't been too bad. So again, as some of you guys probably know, because I mentioned it in a few of my videos at this point, I am in the med board process your girl getting up out of the army maybe if they find me unfit i'll be out of the army but nine times out of ten they are um with the condition that i am med boarding for it's a good chance that my retirement is going to be temporary um 
which the way they explained it, nobody ever really comes back. It usually ends up, ends up being a, like a permanent thing um, on the back end. But all in all, either way it went, um, it's a win-win for me. It's a win. Either way it go, it's a win-win for me. If I get to come back in, cool. If I stay out, cool, because your girl been grinding. So either way it goes for me at this point, I'll be fine. But so when I started the medboard process, I feel like for me, everything is going really fast. So... Um, I got here in August, underwent treatment, did all those things. And again, this is like treatment after treatment because I've been in behavioral health and I've been under treatment for years, but now with the whole med board process, starting with the doctors actually taking a look at stuff and was like, uh, mm, I don't see this getting any better. Let's go ahead and talk about med board again. Cool. So I want to say towards the end of november is when it's hold on let me back up wait a second yes so towards the end of november is when my med board request was sent up a few weeks after that is when i because it was like after thanksgiving so a few weeks after that is when I got word that it was accepted and it was going to go ahead and move forward into the actual med board process. So when you are starting a med board, your provider has to first send it up. It's then reviewed by the doctors and stuff like that to see if you actually qualify or if there's something that you're needing, if you didn't go through enough treatment, whatever the case may be. And if you do qualify, they'll let you know. And if they kick it back, they'll let you know what you need to do before you send it up again, whether or not there's going through a few more months of treatment or whatever the case may be cool so once i got word that i was officially accepted into the med board process i want to say that was probably early december so i waited a few weeks i still wasn't hearing anything when i went in to check just to kind of see what's going on because the thing is I got things to do before I get out. So I'm trying to see how soon, how fast all this stuff was going to gonna go. Even though being on the post that I'm on, it is definitely extended. Like the time went from about six months to get out to way longer than that. So it's not like I was in a rush. I just wanted to get an understanding on where I'm at with my timeline. Anyway, so sent up the request at the end of November. I got word that I was accepted into the med board process at the beginning of December. And by early this month, so early January is when I, is when I heard back from, what is it, like IDES. When I heard back from IDES letting me know like, hey, you're officially in the process, here's your appointment, you have to go to the legal brief, here's your here's your Peblo and all these things. Like it was moving that fast. So after I got that call is when they schedule, they basically explain everything to you, somebody from legal call, you have to fill out some paperwork and stuff like that. But then you have to go to a brief, it's the legal brief to kind of explain everything about the med board process, the VA, IDES and everything to you. And then you meet with your Peblo, usually around the same time. But for me, when it came to my appointments, there's still so many people. When I went to my brief, there was still so many people waiting for their VA appointments. Um, but for me, at that point, mine was already scheduled because, y'all, I kid you not, I want to say, so it's January right now. So it took about a month to get, like, mm, I guess altogether, it took me about two months to get to this point. So from the end of November when everything was sent up to the beginning of December when it was accepted until the beginning of November when they called, like, all right, we got you. Everything's about to start. That was like two months, right? So on the 11th is when I met with my Peblo. He, I turned in all the paperwork because I had everything, like everything. Like it, I'm telling you, if you have everything done and ready to go, the process is going to go fast. But I ended up meeting with my Peblo on the 11th. He sent up everything later that day, um, and he only sent it up at the end of the at the end of the day to give me time to get my paperwork and stuff like that done. So that was a Thursday. By the 12th, which was the next day, on a Friday is when VA reached out and was like, hey, this is the VA. We're going to schedule your appointments. We need this paperwork, this paperwork. Just send me over these things so we can go ahead and um, do it for you. So basically what they were saying, um, it's called a 526EZ. 
it's a form that you fill out with all of your disabilities so anything that you're going to claim you're going to put every single thing on that sheet of paper and so basically when the va calls you they're going to say hey just send me a list they're not expecting you to have the paperwork filled out they just want a list um of everything that you're going to be claiming so then when you send the list over they're going to put all the stuff into the um 526 easy for you then send it back to you so you can sign it and then you send it back to them then they submit the claim and then your appointments and stuff start rolling in but me being the type of person that i am all you have to do is tell me that you need a form filled out and I'm going to do it. So as soon as she called and she's like, oh, yeah, just send me the list and I'll go ahead and get everything done. I'm like, oh, but I'm already done with it. And she's like, you you, you completed the form like you put all the stuff in there. I emailed it to her. Everything was signed. And she's like, oh, that's perfect. Like, that's it. We don't have to do anything else. So it didn't take the five days that we needed it to take. It literally took me that day because she sent it up at the end of Friday. I kid y'all not, Saturday is when um, the VA started rolling out. Well, their third party people that they're with to schedule your appointments and stuff, they started rolling out my appointments that Saturday. So that's how fast this process went for me. Um, well, that's how fast it's going for me so far. So on the 11th, I met with my Peblo. On the 12th, VA called. On the 13th, they started rolling out my appointments and my first appointment was on the 18th. That's how fast it went. Now, when it came to my first appointment, it is called a general medical appointment. Here's my mistake. When it said general medical, for whatever reason, I thought it was like a basic appointment. Like I'm just going just, just to get general information about the process. Y'all, I feel like I explained this a little bit earlier, but no, it's not that. This is the big one. Like this is your big appointment. So all of the things. So let's say you have, you have plantar fasciitis, you have um, flat feet, you have ankle problems, you have knee replacement, knee problems, hip problems, all of those things at, from head to toe, as long as it's not vision, audio, and behavior health, that's what they're checking at that appointment. So this is the appointment that was huge, that was going to last hours, and I did not prep for it at all, which I mean, hindsight it's it was all god the way he lined everything up because y'all i went there unprepared on the 18th i went there unprepared but the doctor didn't have access to my medical records and so she was basically telling me like hey i mean we don't have access to this so we can take down the symptoms but we can't really prove that you have dealt with anything but you know we can still move forward with the appointment I was hesitant and I did not know how it was going to work out, but I was basically like, no, I don't want to do the appointment because I didn't feel like that was fair to me. Like I already have all of my, my imaging, my diagnosis, um, all of the treatment and stuff that I went through and stuff like that. I already have everything in the system. And if you can't see what's already there, you're going to be, for example, asthma. I already have asthma. I already went through the test recently. I already have the medication, but if I'm giving you asthma symptoms, you're going to send me to the pulmonologist to go through testing to confirm that I have asthma when it's already in my records and you can see it. So they ended up rescheduling me for today, which is the 24th. Cool. Literally a few days later. And so I went in today and I'm so glad that I um, waited, even though I still feel like I walked out. Um, I don't know. I was like flustered a little bit. So there was things that I had wrote down. I don't even have my notebook, but there was things that I had wrote down in my notebook that I wish I would have like flipped through one last time before I left the office just to be like, oh yeah, and this. Because with my GERD, like there's like very serious symptoms that I, it, it just, it's, it, I don't know. I don't know. I should have, I should have opened my book again. But Yes, that general medical appointment, that's a really big appointment. So make sure you actually prepare. You have everything written down. Don't be like me because there, I, I had to rush and write everything down when I realized what kind of appointment it was. But I would definitely say write down all of your conditions and then sit there and actually think about some of the symptoms that you be having with that specific conditions. For example, with me, with my GERD, I have the regurgitation. I have the acid reflux. I have the heartburn, I have the epigastric pain, and I reported all that. All of that stuff I actually have, I take medication for it, cool. I have to have regular scopes and stuff just as surveillance, but 
I also have trouble swallowing. Um, and then I choke on my food a lot. So I have to eat slow. And those are a few things that I forgot to report. And I just hope that it's not going to like make or break me, if you know what I'm saying. So I would definitely say write down every last symptom that you can think of for every last condition. Go in there with that notebook. Because when she would ask me something and I can't remember, because like I said, my memory, it, it really is shot. Like I cannot remember a damn thing. It's so crazy. Um, so when she was asking me certain stuff, I would have to go in my phone and look at the list that I compiled. And then um, I would have my notebook and I would go through like the notebook and stuff. So yeah, that's where I am at so far. My first appointment that is out of the way. Um, and my next one is going to be on the 31st. Now, here is how they send your packet. So that's another reason why I'm glad I um, didn't do the first appointment because I didn't even have the packet. So everybody was talking about this packet that you're supposed to receive in the mail. And I'm like, what packet are y'all talking about? Like, it's like my appointments got rolled out so fast. They wouldn't have had time to send me anything in the mail. And so... Um, when I got, when I got home a few days, uh, when I got home that same day, when, from my first appointment, I had one of these sitting on my door. It's so mysterious. It's like, it's real cultish. Like, cause if you don't get the appointment first and you just see this, you literally open it and it's just like, this is your VA appointment. Make sure you come here at this time. It's going to be this long. Don't do this and bring this and do this. So yeah, just know you're going to be getting a few of these every so often to let you know about your appointment before the appointment happens and it literally is just directions on what they want you to do before said appointment so yeah let me just make sure they didn't put no new appointments on here that's another thing so the way they make the appointments it's it's without any regards to the appointments that you already have set so it doesn't matter if, so with me, for example, it was one of my appointments that I had to just reschedule. Just know you get only one freebie to reschedule your appointments. And if you try to reschedule it after that, it's a good chance they're going to kick it back to the VA. Then you're going to have to submit the claim all over again, make the appointments. Because if you submit, if you, if you reschedule one time, that's your freebie. If you reschedule for one appointment again, they're going to cancel all your appointments, kick your claim back, and then you're going to have to start over from square one. But for me, I, again, I have really bad GERD and IBS, so I have to have regular scopes, um, endoscopies, and colonoscopy um, regularly. And I've been waiting six months for this appointment. They just so happened to make one of my appointments on the day I was having that scope done, and I wasn't having that. I don't care. And they even said, oh, well, you'll have to kick it back. I do not care because my health comes first. So I will say, if you know you're about to be in a med board process, try not to schedule any important, uh, how can I put it? Honestly, it's just, it, once everything is up in the air, then you can kind of adjust fire at that point. But just know they don't care about them appointments. They don't they don't care about no type of appointments. If you had a surgery coming up, if you had some type of dental work, if you had some type of very important specialty appointment, they do not care. Your VA appointments come first. And it will behoove you to have that same mindset because the thing is the VA, with the IDES process, you have your med board roped in with your VA. So by the time you get out, you're going to have your VA rating, benefits, all of that stuff. But the thing is the VA is only obligated to evaluate that one condition that you're being boarded for. So basically they're doing you a favor by giving you all these exams to give you ratings for everything else while you're in the med board process. So yeah, um, at this point, I'm just rambling. It's probably about to be so long. Actually, do I want to leave it off here? No, I'll come back tomorrow after I get off work. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. So I'm literally just getting home and I got off hours ago. I got off so long ago and here I am still in uniform. Um, but yeah, I did a thing. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Anyway, I am so excited. I am so excited. And y'all look at my nose.
<laughs> my nose is so red that's because it's itching and i i keep doing this <laughs> anyway um i am so excited y'all i i i bought a car i bought a car <laughs> and i'm so excited y'all <clears throat> I am so excited about this car. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. I'm so happy with this purchase. And it's so crazy how everything happens. It's almost like this was meant to happen today. Because I know I mentioned in my goals video that one of the things that I wanted to do when it came to my finances this year was upgrade my car. And for, for reasons, I explained all that in the video. But um, I was also saying that if I wasn't able to upgrade my car this year, then I would be perfectly fine because I had a perfectly good car. I had a 2020 Nissan Kicks and I bought that car brand new and I just sold it with a little over 28,000 miles on it. So it was a perfectly good car. There was just more features I wanted in a car. I definitely wanted something bigger with more space in it. Um, so yeah, but again, if I wasn't able to, I was perfectly fine. Like I was perfectly fine with going the next few years without having an upgrade or whatever. Anyway, so today I I was just having a day. I was just having a day because I feel like everything's just moving too fast right now and I cannot mentally keep up. It's draining. And for whatever reason, I decided to go to the dealership. I do not know why. I decided to go to the dealership. What, what made me go to the dealership today? There wasn't a reason like I cannot express to you how random the thought to go to the dealership was like it was the most random thing in the entire world. And so um, I don't know. I just went. The individual that I spoke to last time I went wasn't even there. So I ended up speaking to somebody else. And I honestly was just there to see if, you know, I just want to look around. I just want to look at this car that I wanted. Cool. And so um, one thing led to another. And I'm sitting there getting my credit and everything ran. And it's so crazy because the car that I wanted, right? So I went in and I said, listen, this is the car that I want. If I don't have all the features in the car that I want, then... I don't want it basically that's just me speaking uneducated like un that's a that's that's uneducated me speaking because obviously I don't know much about cars I just know what I want in cars and stuff like that cool so he's like all right you know that's fine we can go ahead and look for it but we don't have this specific car on the lot today um but we can go ahead and run your credit make sure everything um get the application started make sure everything is good to go there and yeah, go from there. Cool. I said, um, I want to, I, I want to say maybe like 10, 20 minutes later, the manager comes over and he goes, Hey, you won't believe it. We have this car coming on to the lot. I'm not telling y'all what kind of car it is yet. I have this car coming on the lot and I think you're going to really, really like it. It's not the, it's not the trim you want, but is the one right under it, but it has all of the features that you want in it because it has like the premium packages and stuff in this specific vehicle he goes it has every single thing that you want to have in the vehicle except the ambient lighting i really 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 want an ambient lighting inside of the car but i'm thinking to myself okay it'll be cheaper it's still a brand new car it has everything in the car that i wanted to have except the ambient lights okay all right let me go ahead and be a little bit more open-minded cool i'll take a look at it then he goes oh but it's not here today it's going to get here tomorrow so we can go ahead and still get everything started and then you can come in tomorrow and take a look at it if you don't like it we can go ahead and scrub the idea and start looking for something else cool and at this point even though i went through all of this i'm like okay this is a little deeper into this process that I really wanted to get into today because I had no intentions on doing any of this, but it's so crazy. So then I'm like, you know what? Um, do we have anything close to, so I can actually see what it is that I'm about to get. And he goes, no, I'm sorry. We don't have anything. I'm like, all right. Okay. So then I want to say, as I'm starting everything, I'm starting to get like, I'm doubting myself. Obviously I'm getting like 
premature buyer's remorse or whatever you want to call it y'all my arm hurt <laughs> and all of a sudden the manager comes back over and he goes you won't believe it but they just dropped the car off i said what <laughs> they, he's like no it's outside right now and he hand the key to the other to the guy and he's like the car's outside right now like you can go and look at it and he's like that is so amazing let's go and look at it he goes this is a sign and listen when people start get to talking about signs and it's a sign this and this is a sign, that's my language because i think everything is a sign okay <laughs> i think everything is a sign so um i ended up going out and i'm looking at the car and those light gray leather seats mm. I was sold immediately. I'm so excited. I was sold immediately. And so, um, yeah, I'm just in a car. I'm looking around. I didn't need to test drive it because I've already test drive the car or whatever. And next thing you know, I'm buying a car. I'm buying a car. So because they had just got it right then, it literally just got off the off the um off the truck. They still have to send it through the inspection and stuff like that. So they gave me um, just a loaner car to use because I did trade my kicks in. I love that car. But I did trade my kicks in. They ended up giving me a loaner car to use today, which is the trim underneath the trim that I have. So as much as I love the loaner car that I'm driving right now, that kind of reinforces how much I'm about to love my freaking car so much. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, yes. I bought a freaking car and I'm telling you right now one thing about it is I was again I don't want to really go on a rant but let me just say this when it comes to having faith and when it comes to like really trusting in God I will say I low-key sometimes be feeling inadequate because it seems like everybody that you know really dive into their faith and really is open and speak about their faith really like faith driven everybody say the same thing like you hand it to god and you're not supposed to worry and for me i still be worrying i feel like i do give it to god and i pray and i i'm looking for the signs and i'm trying to figure out what it is that he wants me to do i make sure i stop and i'm trusting in god and i'm obeying him and i'm praising him and i'm doing these things and i'm trying to live right but I still worry. I still worry. For example, like let's for let me for example, let's say you have like a bill or something like that you can't pay and you are stressed out about it. Obviously, you're going to pray. You're going to go to God like, God, I need your help with this. I need you to ease my mind because I am really stressed. I need you to just put your hands on this situation. I do the I do that. I do that. I feel like my relationship with my God is growing. And I feel like it's solid but I still worry. And so when I'm seeing all of these, you know, Christian influencers, spiritual influencers, and they're like, oh, I'm not worried about anything because I put it in God's hands. If you really, if you really have faith and you really believe and trust in God, you wouldn't worry about anything. And I'm like, but I do. So does that mean my faith isn't strong enough? Does that mean that I'm not trusting in God enough does that mean I'm not doing it right because I'm still worried because I can't help it I can't help it the thing is I trust in my Lord 100% I'm telling you right now 100% there's not a thing that I do that I don't think about the consequences whether good or bad from my spiritual standpoint before I do it that's 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 how I'm going to put that. So it's hard feeling like I'm not good enough or I'm inadequate simply because I worry. I can't help it. I can't help it. But one thing I will say, I'm starting to learn and I think I posted that a little bit ago, but I don't care what nobody else say. I don't care what anybody else say. I don't care who says no. When God already made up his mind and said, yes, nothing else matters. That's all that matters. When God says yes, it's already yours. It's been yours. And so that's one thing that um, that brings me solace. That's one of the things that kind of keep me grounded. And it's like, if it was meant for me, I'm going to have it. I just need to make sure my goals are pure hearted and they're 
I'm trying to line them up with what he's wanting my life to look like because that way I'm beating my blessings where they are. Do you get what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm telling you right now, when you start getting more into your spirituality, more into your faith, it's hard. It's hard because I kid you not, blindly having faith and just trusting that things are going to go right and not worrying about it has been one of the biggest challenges that I've had. I have to say it, it really it really have but this whole car thing like I said I was stressing over it because it's like I, I kind of I don't need it need it but I kind of need it and then with the whole financial aspects of everything it just made sense and look at how God worked look at how God worked how did this happen today anyway I'm gonna go ahead and leave this vlog here if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. We are on the road to 10K subscribers by the end of the year, and I cannot wait. I see so many new subscribers, and I am so happy to have y'all here. I hope y'all are enjoying being here. Make sure you introduce yourself down below. And guess, just guess. I don't know if I ever mentioned it in any of the videos, but guess what kind of car I bought but that is all for this video because I really do have to get in a shower I have to get these clothes I'll get in the shower get to bed because it's kind of late it's kind of late I don't even I wanted to go through perfumes tonight but mm -mm, it's late I'm gonna see y'all in the next one bye Walker down the valley, pack a piece of heaven for the bottoms of her feet. Teach her how to jump and how to stretch when she reach. Like the angels do, and you gon' make it through now. Tell about the healer, greater is the one within.